Hello, welcome to the Thursday, February 18th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Many social networks have a feature where if you receive a message within the social network, it will send you a notification via email. The idea kind of is, of course, to get you to go back to the social networking website. And it's sometimes a little bit sold as a more secure way to exchange messages because you avoid some of the issues with exchanging emails. However, this is only true if the link actually leads to the particular social network. And we have a nice uh, guest diary by J.B. Bowers uh, showing uh, how this can be abused and is being abused by the bad guys, in this case, by impersonating LinkedIn. Now, uh, they're sort of claiming that uh, there is a LinkedIn secure message, which doesn't actually exist in that form, and they send you a private shared document. Clicking on the link gets you then uh, to a phishing page that solicits your LinkedIn credentials. So why are people going after LinkedIn credentials? Well, a couple of reasons. First of all, you may use the same credentials on other sites, in particular your main email provider as well. And secondly, once they do have your LinkedIn credentials, they can then leverage them to reach out uh, to your contacts. JB's diary also has a good number of indicators of compromise from this particular attack, but points out how difficult it can be uh, to find and detect these attacks since uh, they're pretty much using very well-known and frequently used uh, cloud services. So an attack like this uh, easily disappears in the noise. And Patrick Wardle has published a blog post showing how he was able to find a couple of uh, specific malware samples that were compiled for Apple's new M1 chip. The way to this is by basically just searching virus total for samples using specific tags that he outlines in his uh, blog post. Overall, it does, however, look like uh, malware doesn't really gain a lot at this point uh, from compiling specifically for uh, the M1 processor. It's probably just easy uh, to do for them uh, to just uh, go for it. The one particular sample that he analyzes is actually a Safari plugin that will inject ads. So nothing I would consider as terribly sophisticated, advanced, or targeted, which means it was probably just relatively easy to do. Personally, I would have more likely expected it for ransomware, which of course, with all the crypto operations, probably has something to gain performance-wise by being compiled specifically for the M1 processor. And QNAP, uh, the maker of uh, network disk storage solutions, uh, did uh, fix uh, two vulnerabilities in its uh, product. One affects the photo station feature and it's only rated medium. It's a cross-site scripting vulnerability. The critical one is in the surveillance station feature. This is a buffer overflow that would allow arbitrary code execution. The surveillance station is used uh, to uh, record uh, security camera footage on these QNAP uh, disks. It is a quite popular product and of course in order to uh, remote monitor some of uh, these cameras you may expose it to the internet. Best solution here of course is always to do so via a VPN. Based on QNAP's advisory, it's not clear whether or not uh, this can be exploited with or without authentication. And Talos has an interesting blog post about a new variant of MassLogger. They found MassLogger will infect your system and then exfiltrate credentials uh, to the bad actors. Now, what's sort of a little bit different here is the extension used for uh, the sample as it arrives via email. It's a raw compressed file, 
but RAR usually use RAR as file extension. That's not what's being used here. Instead, it uses R09. The trick is that RAR has an option where you split an archive into multiple parts and then the extension becomes R followed by a number. And that's essentially the feature they're exploiting here, likely trying uh, to bypass some anti-malware filters. Within the compressed files, we have a good old CHM file. We talked about them earlier this week and that via ActiveX actually will then run PowerShell to load additional malware. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for everybody who noticed the wrong day in yesterday's podcast. I got quite a few of responses, so didn't get to respond to everybody individually, but yes, you're all entered into the Raspberry Pi challenge for this month. That's it. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.